everybody knows what a sleeve is, but did you know there are so many kinds? There's puffed, raglan, cap, and batwing. Well, watch this. Sleeve styles change by gender, generations, and current trends, but there are a few favorites. The batwing, dolman, and kimono sleeves have slightly different shapes, but share a characteristic. They can all be what is called cut on. That means the sleeve is cut in the same piece as the bodice pattern. It is not a separate piece. Sometimes sleeves of this style have a seam on the outside of the arm. Raglan sleeves carry part of the shoulder with them. They are sewn to the bodice with seams that slant from under the arm to the neckline and will work with all kinds of garments. To fit properly, they often require a dart or its equivalent at the shoulder. Set-in sleeves are the most common and have the most style options. They include cap sleeves, puff sleeves, sleeves with ruffles and cuffs, and every imaginable length. We're going to talk about the set-in sleeve today because it's by far the sleeve most used in coats, jackets, shirts, blouses, and dresses. There are various styles of set-in sleeves, but they are all similar, and the information we discuss applies to all of them. First, let's take a look at the arm. I don't think any other garment part works as hard as a sleeve does. It has a full range of movements. It swings forwards, backwards, up, and down. It bends in the middle and at the wrist. Clothing the arm takes some engineering. This is the basic silhouette of a set-in sleeve pattern. This is a real pattern, but sometimes I'll demonstrate on miniature patterns because it's easier for you to see. Patterns come marked with key information that will help you sew the sleeve to your garment. These two edges come together to form the underarm seam. This edge is the sleeve cuff or hem. This curved edge is the sleeve cap edge and contains the sleeve cap seam line. When the two bodice pieces are sewn together at the shoulder seam and side seam, they make the armhole, or what is also called the arm's eye. There are always two notches on the back of the arm and one on the front. These notches correspond to notches on the armhole and you should match them when you attach the sleeve. That way you're sure to get your sleeve pointed in the right direction. This edge is where the sleeve cap seam sews the sleeve to the armhole. It contains other marks to help you set your sleeve perfectly into the armhole, such as this dot, which indicates where the sleeve cap seam intersects the shoulder seam. The dots on either side indicate where to begin and end your ease stitching. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. You can see here how the pattern marks repeat on both sides of the seam, the armhole and the sleeve cap. Use these marks to get everything in the right place. One other thing I should call your attention to before we proceed is how the fabric grain influences the sleeve. Let's turn back to the real pattern. Remember, the grain is the direction of the thread that is woven parallel to the salvages of the fabric. When I lay this sleeve pattern over the gridded cutting mat, you can see that even when the pattern is cut on grain, a good part of the sleeve cap seam edge is on the bias. This adds stretch to the sleeve in those areas and makes it fit and feel better. I'll show how this bias section can also help when we get to sewing the sleeve in. Let's go back to the model arm and see what happens to these shapes when they get on the body. We have two tubes, one around the torso and one around the arm. They almost look like they're battling each other. They will fit together, but they aren't the same size. I'll explain. I've marked the seam lines on these corresponding seams to measure their length between the dots. As you can see, the armhole is 3 fourths inches shorter than the sleeve cap seam. 
This is the first time we've talked about what to do when seams that go together don't match. You fix the problem by gathering the longer edge to fit the shorter edge. This is the ease stitching I mentioned earlier. Remember, this is done just between the dots. Sew two rows of long basting stitches between the dots, one just shy of the seam line and the other one fourth inch into the seam allowance. Draw up the bobbin threads in a very gentle gather without puckers to shorten the sleeve cap length just on the seam line until it fits. This makes the sleeve turn into the shoulder. You can see the shoulder forming here. Just like everything in sewing, there are several ways to sew in a sleeve. Not all of the experts agree on the best way. I think the best way is the one that works for you. But in the next episode, I'll show you a good way to sew in a sleeve and give you some options.